Just imagine what it will feel like when you finally begin to discover together the number one secret of why it's easier to get rich today than it ever has been in all of human history. Now, why does getting rich seem so hard and so difficult to so many people? You may not like to hear it like this, but the controversial answer is, the reason why getting rich feels so hard to so many people is because most people are trying to make a fortune in the present by making a living in the past. What does that mean? We're talking all about it today in this video. Before we get into the video today, make sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the like button. It pushes this content in front of more people. It's completely free for you. And obviously it allows you to see this content as soon as it's released. So what do I mean by most people are trying to make a fortune today by making a living in the past? Well, I've got really, really good news for you. And I've also got really, really bad news for you. The really, really good news is, is that you don't need a college degree anymore to make an amazing living and even a fortune in today's world. Now, the bad news is, is if you do go to college, and by the way, nothing wrong with going to college, but if you do go to college and get a degree, by the time you're done with your degree, you're going to find yourself finally prepared to make a living in a world that no longer exists. Unfortunately, by the time you do graduate college, what you learned in your first year is already out of date. It's obsolete by the time you graduate. Why? Because technology speeds things up so fast. Technology changes the world so fast that what you learned when you first went into college, it no longer serves you as you're getting out of college. So therefore, these individuals who are going to college are attempting to do something that worked for their parents, it worked for their grandparents, but it does not work for today. So check this verse out in Luke chapter 16, verse eight. It says this, the children of this world are more wise in their generation than the children of light. What does this mean? Listen, it is my conviction that many times the people of the world, right? Unbelievers are more wise in their dealings because many times those people are willing to do the thing that works in their generation. And many times people in the church, believers, God's people, for whatever reason, we love to just hang on to what worked in the last generation or hang on to what worked two generations ago. When the, the Bible is literally saying here, this is Jesus talking out of the book of Luke. He's saying, listen, I want you to be wise in your generation. Right, so in today's video, I hope to share some light on how to get rich today, and hopefully you can become wise in your generation and learn how to make money in your generation and not your parents' generation or your grandparents' generation or your great-grandparents' generation, because that stuff don't work anymore. We've gotta wise up, we've gotta become wise in our generation, and we have to tap into the opportunities that are available to us today in this generation. So most people who create new wealth, and by the way, this isn't like a blanket statement 100% of the time, but most of the time, people who create new wealth do it by taking massive action on the humongous opportunities that are available to them in their generation. In fact, my mentor says it like this, you cannot understand the mystery of wealth until you first understand the history of wealth. And you have to admit, for most people around the world, wealth is a mystery, but I don't want wealth to be a mystery for you any longer. I wanna help you become wise in your generation. So let's come here to the board and let's start digging in. So let's talk about how wealth was created in every generation, okay? So watch this. From the beginning of time, okay, from the Garden of Eden all the way to about 1750 or so, in this generation, this was the, the agricultural age. Oops. Agricultural age. Now, what was the agricultural age? The agricultural age, in this age, wealth was signified by land. Okay, so the more land you had, the more wealth you had. What does that mean? Okay, so... In agriculture, obviously from the beginning of time, uh, book of Genesis, all the way to about the mid 1700s, the way that you created wealth was very, very slow. Why? Because 
in order to create wealth, you had to have land that you could work the land, have farms, plant seeds, do crops. And here's the crazy part. The reason why wealth, for the most part, moved so slow in the agricultural age is because there was only a harvest like once a year. So like you had to hope and pray that the weather was good. You had to hope and pray that, you know, the birds didn't come and like eat up your crops. You had to hope and pray that the harvest was actually a good one. You had to hope and pray that all the watering was done. You had to hope and pray that the sun shone just perfectly. And if all of this crazy stuff happened perfectly, then you would get a harvest once a year. And this was so crazy, man, because once a year you get this big harvest, you go harvest everything out. And that's whenever you would have enough, obviously for you and your family, but also to go sell into the marketplace, right? Maybe you've got a harvest of tomatoes and the guy or gal down the street has a harvest of carrots and you guys sell to each other, right? And everybody knows that you're the tomato guy and she's the, the carrot gal or whatever it is, right? And he over there is the apple person and you know she's the, the peach lady or whatever it is. And so that's a lot of how the, the market and how the economy moved was off of these very slow systems. And unfortunately, the only way to build wealth back in the agricultural age was you had to have land, right? So if you were born into a family that did have land, then chances are you, unless somebody like from another country came and like raided your farm and like plundered everything and took over, unless something like that happened, chances are you were probably gonna just be wealthy your whole entire life. Right. And unfortunately, if you were born into a family that didn't have land, chances were that you were probably going to stay poor your whole entire life. In fact, in the agricultural age, there was no like there was no middle class. Right. It was either like you were wealthy because you had land or you were very poor because you didn't have land. And this is the way, for the most part, that the world worked. In fact, Almost all of the economy on the globe moved at a very slow pace in the agriculture age because it was just dependent on a once a year harvest. So here's how people would actually make a little bit of money if they were poor in the agriculture age, all right? So these lords of the land, in fact, that's where we get the word landlord from, right? These men and women who owned the land, they were the lords of the land, they would have little spaces on their land to have you know, poor servants to come and either live on the land or work the land. And if you were poor, you had to go out and you had to work the land during the time of sowing, right? And then you had to water everything. You had to work from the sweat of your brow, dig in with shovels and picks and axes and making sure all the, the um, parasites and everything are off of all the plants and the fruits, right? You're out there in the sun every single day. And the way that you got paid was if you worked a day's work, you would get a day's wage. Unfortunately, for a lot of people around the world right now, this mindset of like, oh, a day's worth of work for a day's wage, it's still in the mindset today in 2024 when I'm recording this video right now, right? Because of the opportunities that are available to us today in this generation, we don't have to put in a day's work to get a day's wage. In fact, you can put in some creative work and you could reap a lifetime of benefits just from a moment of creativity. But before I get ahead of myself, let's keep talking about this. So these, these paupers and these poor people that would work the land, if they did good enough, right, they'd, they'd bring the harvest to the master, to the landlords, right? And if they did a good enough job, then the landlord would give them just enough food for their family, maybe a tiny bit of pay just so that they could continue living. And it, the whole cycle started over again the next day, like work the land, water everything, make sure there's no pests, right? And so in the agricultural age, that's why there was no middle class. So this is the number one reason why in the agricultural age, wealth would move very, very slow because the global economy was always waiting on an annual harvest. Now, obviously in different parts of the world, the harvests would happen at different times. So it's not like there was one global harvest all at the same time, but you know, in this region, it would harvest at this time, once a year. At this region, it would harvest at this time, once a year. And so everything in the economy was moving super slow because everyone was just waiting for, we need some rain, right? Or man, it's been too cloudy, we need some sun. 
or man, this year's harvest was not very good and we didn't make that much money. Hopefully next year we can, we can scrape by until next year. Hopefully it'll be good enough, right? So that's why guys, in the agricultural age, the only way to make more money was to have more land. If you could somehow have a good harvest and go purchase some more land, then now you can have you know bigger farming areas and maybe a little bit more servants, a little bit bigger of a harvest. And honestly, guys, this was the slowest in all of history that uh, money and wealth was created. But let's move on to the next generation where real wealth was created. Hey, I really hope that you're enjoying the video. I wanna invite you guys. I have recently created a free training teaching people how to make money online. My students are literally making anywhere from five to $10,000 a month. And some of them even make hundreds of thousands of dollars, not in a year, but in a single day. If you want more information on how you can get started, all you need is a phone and a laptop. You can go to digitalproductacademy.org or you can click the link below in the description. Guys, after you watch the free training, if it sounds like it might be something cool for you to check out, you can book a free call with one of my client success coaches and they'll be able to help you more. Now, back to the video. So the next generation where real wealth was created was about 1750 to about the 1940s, okay? And this was the industrial age, okay? And in remember, in the agricultural age, land equaled wealth. Well, guess what? In the industrial age, guess what happened? Now, machines equaled wealth, okay? So after hundreds and thousands of years of the global economy being based off of agriculture, men begin to get more wise. And remember, like the book of Luke chapter 16 told us, they begin to get wise in their generation and somebody somewhere started going, huh, what if we could create like these machines instead of having a hundred guys out there in the field or a hundred ladies out there, whatever, picking berries or, uh, you know, hundreds of people, if you have a big land or a big farm, hundreds of people out there harvesting the pumpkins or whatever it was, what if we could create these machines that would do the work of a hundred men in a day, right? And so they begin to innovate. They begin to go, hmm, this would be a pretty crazy idea. And one thing led to another and they started building machines that could literally replace the work of a hundred men. They could do it with a machine in a one single day. So what did this mean? This meant that wealth was now being generated on a much larger scale and not just a larger scale of wealth, but a faster speed of wealth, why? Because these machines would do the work of a hundred men in, in a day, right? And it wasn't just like tractors and machines. Um, this is where we started getting like, you know, trains, right? Trains, right? Um, assembly lines, factories. This is where um, unions were formed. And the biggest thing that came in the industrial age was permission. What does that mean? Now think about this, okay? So all the way up into like the 1940s, if you were like a good singer or if you were an author, right? If you, if you were somebody who had creativity, the only way for you to make it in society or to make it uh, out there in the world was for somebody with one of these factories or one of these machines to actually give you permission. Like, it's mind blowing to me that there are people out there who, you know, cause we have social media today, right? So they're like, all we have to do is just pick up our smartphone and start shooting content. There's no permission at all. We don't need to have a record executive, uh, executive tell us we're good enough. We don't have to have a, a publisher tell us that our book can, can actually be released. There's, there's no permission today, but back then there was so much permission, man. Like you couldn't get ahead because if you were creative, because you needed somebody to be like, you're good enough or you're not good enough. And honestly, in the day of permission here in the industrial age, okay, so all these machines are being built, assembly lines, trains, right? Automobiles, like all this stuff is starting to boom. But if you were a creative who wanted to actually impact culture and serve the world with your creativity, you just needed somebody to tell you you were good enough 
whether you were or not. You just needed somebody who knew somebody who knew somebody who knew somebody who knew somebody in the industry to finally give you permission, right? Now, here's the worst part about this whole permission culture that came out in the industrial age. This is where modern school, this is where the modern school system was instituted, was right here in the industrial age. Now think about this, like, you know, the industrial age stuff is booming, right? Like you're no longer having to like dig the, dig the ground with a shovel yourself, but maybe you're uh, driving a tractor. Maybe you are, let's talk about the assembly lines, right? Like maybe you're working in one of these uh, factories with these cool new machines that speed harvest up and you're, you're at the assembly line, like doing this and stuff in the box or whatever it is that you're doing. And could you imagine like the boss comes in, right? And the boss goes, hey, John, you're doing a great job here on the assembly line. You know, it'd be really awesome if you could actually go back to school at nighttime, maybe get a little bit more education so that you could be a little bit more qualified. And after you are, and after you receive your degree, then maybe you could come back and maybe instead of you working the actual assembly line, maybe you could manage the assembly line. And this is where people were like, hey, this sounds awesome. So guess what John, in this context, guess what this person would do? They would go home to their family at night and be like, hey guys, listen, there's an opportunity for us to not have to work the assembly line or not have to drive the trucks or not have to try to you know, uh, drive the trains and be gone from you guys for a week. Now, if I just go back to school and I got a little bit more educated in the, in the school system, and I got a degree, I could come back and maybe become a manager. They'll pay me a little bit more money. That way the boss doesn't have to manage everybody. I can manage people. Guys, this is exactly how traditional school was set up in the industrial age. And so guess what happens? What worked for their generation, right? What worked in the industrial age in the 1940s, what worked for our grandparents and their parents doesn't necessarily work today for us. That was wise in their generation, but going to school to just, you know, get in more in debt to get a bigger degree so that you can come back and hopefully one day be a manager and they'll pay you maybe a couple dollars extra an hour. That's not necessarily wise in our generation. So I want you guys to really pay attention on these couple of different timelines I've given you so far. Check this out right quick, okay? So here in, from the beginning of time to about the 17, mid 1700s, okay? Notice this, okay? This is a super long time, right? Super long time. Beginning of time to like 1750s, it's like thousands of years where the world's economy was ran off of agriculture. And then from 1750s to about the 1940s, now the world's economy is being ran off of the industrial age. But something interesting here, Okay, this time frame was not nearly as long as this one, even though this one was still pretty long, okay? One thing that you need to take notice of is that every generation's opportunity, it actually, not only does technology and ideas and innovation speed up wealth, but every new generation's opportunity, it literally is replaced by the old generation's opportunity. Think about this, right? Agriculture, like we're out here working the land and guess what? We got so good at agriculture, people started getting smart and going, hmm, what if we had machines? And they're like, yeah, let's build some machines. So they started building some machines, right? And now all these machines are doing the work of a hundred men in a day. Like stuff is speeding up, even though it's still going a little bit slower in the years wealth is beginning to speed up. But watch this, remember what I just said. The, the current generation's innovation and opportunities always gives way to something better and the better thing that it gives way to actually replaces the current generation's way. How do I know this? Because come over here with me to the board and let's check out what comes next. All right, now check this out. So from about the 1940s, now all of this is approximate guys, right? Um, but check this out, from about the 1940s to about 1981, we went into the next economic age. And this age was the distribution age, okay? And just like how in 
the agricultural age, land equaled wealth, okay? Just like in the industrial age, machines equaled wealth. Now in the distribution age, guess what? You got it. Those who owned the distribution outlets, they were the ones who were able to create wealth in their generation, okay? So remember, we've gotta be wise in our generation. Every economic era of the past created the next economic era that replaced it, okay? So what came in the distribution age? Like, think about this, okay? So. We go from the agricultural age, right? We got all this farming and everything. Then in the next generation, they wised up. They said, man, we could speed this up if we just had some machines, if we had some trains, if we had some cars, right? So they begin to build all of these machines. And then in the distribution age, something crazy happened, right? They were producing at such high volumes in the market, right? Like now, it wasn't just a once a year harvest because we didn't have enough guys or the weather wasn't quite right. Now we had machines and assembly lines and we have cars that can take, take the harvest from your farm you know, across the city in 30 minutes instead of a 12 day walk journey. You know, like, so stuff sped up and now everything was being created on mass at such a high level. Now people are like, well, man, we have to figure out a way how to distribute all of, this, all of these goods so that we can begin to serve more people and make even more money. Guys, just like this happens in every generation, okay? When this happened in the, in the distribution age, wealth again began to be created on more massive volumes and it also began to be created at lightning fast speeds compared to the industrial age, right? So. What did we see come about in the distribution age? Well, one of these things that we saw come about in the distribution age, for those who are old enough to remember, okay, what about MTV? We saw MTV, there were so many musicians now, and remember in the last age, they were still needing permission. Like it's mind blowing to me that someone like a, a Michael Jackson, right? Like super talented guy, he was not able to get out there on the radio or to like have a record until somebody said, okay, Michael, you're good enough. Like what, what is going on? But because now of all these machines, right? People were building even, you know, record companies and they would have machines that could make the records on mass, right? And they were, yes, they were still giving permission. Yes, people were still going to schools, but even the school system, even in the eighties guys was starting to get outdated, right? because that was for a past generation, but it wasn't necessarily for this generation or for that generation at that time, right? So now you have all these machines, let's just take the record industry for instance, you've got all of these artists who are being given permission because there's enough machines to put them out there en masse, now we should distribute to them, and what are we gonna do? We're gonna create things like MTV. Now this is crazy, I actually heard a story, speaking of Michael Jackson, I heard a story that the first time Michael Jackson tried to get on MTV, they didn't let him. Like, could you imagine? This is like Michael Jackson, man. Whether you like his music or not, the punchline is like this guy was extremely, extremely talented. And for like one of the most talented people in entertainment who ever lived, right? Like sing, dance, musician, like all of it, production. Like they still told him no the first time around, and it wasn't until the second time, they're like, okay, let Michael on. Then, as soon as they put Michael Jackson on MTV, that's when MTV actually took off and swept the globe, okay? So that was one distribution outlet. What was another huge distribution outlet that came out during the distribution age? Well, I don't know, it's just, it's a small little company. I don't know if you've ever heard of them before. They're called Walmart. Guys, Walmart, Walmart was established in the distribution age. Remember what I said with the distribution age, how wealth was created? Whoever owned the distribution outlets in the distribution age, they were the ones who created wealth in their generation. Now, 
If you're getting value today out of this video, drop some fire emojis in the comments because here in just a moment, I'm gonna get to the age that we're living in today and how you can take advantage, massive advantage, of the crazy opportunities that are available to us in this generation. So you don't have to try to try to build your fortune in the present by trying to make your living in the past. You have got to take advantage of the opportunities that are available to you in your generation. Now guys, with Walmart, Sam Walton, okay, you have all these machines, all this, the, the goods are being produced now. Now obviously now we're thousands of years past the agriculture age, so we're not just doing fruits and vegetables anymore. Now we're creating uh, you know, coffee on mass and clothes on mass and makeup products on mass and uh, we're distributing groceries on mass and we're doing all of these consumer goods on mass. So Sam Walton said, man, I gotta get in on this. This is the time for my generation. I'm going to own one of the distribution outlets and guess what? Because he jumped in on the opportunity that was available for his generation, he owned one of the biggest distribution outlets. It wasn't the biggest when he started, by the way. That was what created crazy amounts of wealth. Just like in the industrial age, people who jumped in on uh, trains and coal and train tracks and oil, right? They were the ones who created massive wealth. Think about it, in the agricultural age, we even see in the Bible, the people who were the richest, like Abraham, they were, the Bible says they were very rich in cows and land. And then of course, gold and other money riches. But how did they get the money? Because they had the land. Guys, every single generation, and we're getting to ours here in just a minute, but every single generation if you want to create real, true, lasting wealth, not just wealth for you, but wealth that lasts to generations, you have got to tap in to what's available to your generation because that's what Luke chapter 16 says, you've got to be wise in your generation. So what other outlets were created in the distribution age? Okay, we had, um, for the first time ever, this is where direct sales were created here in the, in the uh, distribution age. Uh, multi-level marketing companies, uh, they were created in the distribution age. Now here's the punchline guys, I want you to see here in all these generations, whoever caught the trend first of the massive opportunity that was available to them in their generation, they were the ones who would create the most incredible, mind-blowing, oh my gosh, wealth out of anybody in the generation it was these people who would catch the trends. So my question to you is, are you looking for trends to catch in your generation? Let's move on to the next one. Okay, so let's look here, what came next? From about 1981, oops, 1981 to about 1999, this was the technology age. In fact, fun fact, okay, in 1978, this little known thing was created. Oops, what am I doing here? This little known thing was created in 1978 called the personal <laughs> computer, right? And so right at the end, right at the end of the distribution age, the personal computer was created and that kicked off the technology age, guys. Where did wealth get created in the technology age? Well, whoever had tech or tech knowledge, whoever controlled the tech or the tech knowledge, they were the ones in this generation to create the wealth. Now again, I just want to show you as a reminder, okay? Look how time is speeding up with every generation, right? This one was thousands of years. This one was hundreds of years. This one was a couple of decades. This one right here was like just a little over a decade, right? So again, like I keep saying, every generation's economic opportunity, it, it innovates to the point where it speeds up the process of wealth in the generation, so much so that it replaces itself by birthing the next opportunity in the economy. So 
We got so good at distribution, people are like, man, how could we speed this distribution thing up even more? And so in the, the technology age, this is where we begin to see people like Bill Gates, right? Bill Gates, uh, Steve Jobs, uh, Michael Dell of, of Dell Computers. These tech guys and gals, right? They were beginning to innovate. They were beginning to say, okay, how can we take distribution and not just make distribution faster, how can we make distribution like instantly? Like how can we take this thing, instead of having to drive from here to there or put it on the radio and wait until next Thursday for the record to drop or whatever it was, how can we distribute lightning fast, like immediately? Because if we can, if distribution in the distribution age sped up wealth, then guess what else is gonna speed up wealth in the technology age? Like, how can we just speed all of that up? How can we do all of that at scale and at mass speed? And that's what technology does. And also there was this other guy that was coming out right about at the end of the technology age. I don't know if you've ever heard of him before, but he's this guy named Jeff Bezos. And he created this little, this little technology website, one of the first of its kind. Called Amazon.com, guys. Like, think about this. Is, is this starting to make sense to you now? Like, whoa, this is crazy, right? And every single generation, the way that you create wealth in your generation is to take massive advantage of the opportunities that are available to you in your generation. Don't be like the people in Luke chapter 16 who they're, they're not as wise as the people of the world, right? The children of the light were not as wise. Why? Because they still wanted to do it the way that the old generation did it, right? That's why, in my opinion, this is one of the main reasons why God's people stay broke, that they stay struggling because they are trying to build their fortune in the present by making a living in the past, Yes, what you're doing right now, it may have worked for your parents. It may have worked for your grandparents. It may have worked for past generations. But if you are not where you're, you want to be in your wealth journey right now, it's because you are still trying to make a living in the past. You got to jump into what is available to us today. Now, I have students all the time who tell me like, man, this is this internet thing's crazy. And I'm getting ahead of myself a little bit here. But this internet thing's a little bit crazy and you know, I gotta, I gotta learn how to use social media and this internet thing. Guys, I'm telling you what, like there are certain things in life that are just worth figuring out. And by the way, I need at least 10 people to drop in the comments. If you're gonna be one who figures out the massive opportunity, I'm gonna reveal it to you here in just a second, but the massive opportunity in your generation, if you're gonna be one of those who figure it out, who take advantage and create wealth in your generation, I need at least 10 people in the comments right now to say, that's me. You drop it two, three, four times. If that's you, say, man, I'm gonna figure this out. It's either gonna work or it's gonna work. Which one, right? Like there are certain things that are just worth figuring out. Every single one of us here, we were born without the ability to walk. But guess what? You didn't just like lay up in your bed for the rest of your life and just like, well, that walking thing is just not for me. No way, man, you figured it out. Why? Because walking was worth figuring it out, right? Like none of us here uh, came out of the womb knowing how to operate a motor vehicle, right? Like, could you, could you imagine like, and maybe you can, like for those of you who already drive, like the feeling of terror as a 16 year old, I can imagine, I can remember, right? Like, okay, 10 and two, and uh, there's like 47 mirrors to check. And then I've got to, okay, gas and then brake and then red light, yellow light, green light, and this lane or that lane. And I, I gotta put my blinker on and make sure the seat belts are like, there's so much to remember. And now my question to you is how many of y'all, after you've been driving for a few years, maybe you, maybe last night, maybe you drove home on autopilot. Like you've driven so many times, you figured it out and now it's so easy to you. You do it as a second nature and maybe, I don't know about you, but there are many times I drive home on autopilot, not like dangerously, but I'm just, 
I zone out and I'm just driving without thinking. And then I pull up into my driveway and I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm home already? That's crazy, right? Like it happens to all of us. Why? Because like any other skill, right? Like any other opportunity, the more you learn it and the quicker you can figure it out, the easier it becomes and the faster it becomes even like a second nature to you. This is why I'm always talking about, guys, it's easy to get rich. It's easy to create wealth. I know it might seem hard. I know it might feel hard, but when you learn the skills, when you take advantage of the opportunities that are available in our generation, in this generation, and you give yourself to figure it out, you can literally go from like, man, this is hard to like, oh my gosh, I just made a hundred K in my sleep. Like that was cool. Like that took no effort at all. You can get there. How do I know this? Because I've done it. My students do it, right? Like I, I coach people to do this every single day. If I could do it, if my students can do it, you can do it too, right? Uh, in fact, I need at least 10 people in the comments right now. Drop these words, say me too. Say me too, that's me, right? So what do we see here in the technology age, all right? Whoever owned the tech, whoever owned the technology knowledge, they were the ones to be able to take advantage of creating massive wealth in their generation. But guys, let's keep on moving on. Okay, guys, so the next generation, this generation, oops, let me tell you the, the times first. So from about 1999, to about 2007, we moved into the information age, okay? Now, this is crazy because this is the first time in human history that you could create massive amounts of wealth without actually having any physical assets. What does that mean? It means you didn't have to own land, right? You didn't have to have machines or shopping malls or, you know, record labels or grocery stores, like in the information age, all you needed was to leverage the things that were available to you from the past, not make money the way that they made money in the past, but leverage them to your benefit. You could utilize you know, the, the distribution and the tech, use that as a tool to now start putting out information, right? This is where intellectual property begin to explode like songwriters and poets and um, man, uh, play writers, right? Like different kinds of movie writers, like people who could literally just come up with something creative and put it on the internet, distribute it on the internet. And then people would just literally take the information. This was the first time in human history that people begin to make money with their selling their knowledge, okay? So let's come back here to the board in the information age, okay? So what was the signs of wealth in the information age, okay? So no one can own all the knowledge, of course, except for God, okay? But whoever controlled the flow of knowledge, they were the ones who would create massive amounts of wealth. Now again, please hear me guys, like the this time frame for all of these is relative. Maybe it's in the beginning, maybe it's off by a couple hundred years. Here towards the end, maybe it's off by a couple of years. But the point is, check this out, in the information age, okay, what came in the information age? Well, in the mid to late 90s, guess what happened? This thing, I don't know if you've ever heard of it, the internet, right? Like the internet was created obviously a little bit before this, but it went to mass market in the mid to late nineties and stuff was like information was just starting to go everywhere, right? Everywhere. And something super, super important that happened here in the information age. Okay. Not only the internet, but guess what else was created in this time frame, in this financial age, guess what else was created here? the very first social medias, okay? Like I'm talking Facebook. How many of y'all remember MySpace from back in the day? MySpace, guys, a huge one. Oops, a huge one. You're watching on this right now. 
YouTube. Oh my gosh. Like in the information age, whoever controlled the flow of knowledge, they were the ones who created massive amounts of wealth. This is where you have the Mark Zuckerbergs, right? This is where you have um, uh, the, the guys at Google, right? Google.com was formed in this time. This is where you've got YouTube, right? The, the people are coming up with innovation. And again, as a reminder, okay, every generation that has this economic opportunity, all right, when the economic opportunity gets capitalized on, okay, it becomes so efficient in that specific way of doing it that it actually gives birth to the next generation's opportunity and it replaces itself. Okay, watch where I'm going with this. Because here in the information age, remember, you know, these, these guys who were inspired by like, okay, if distribution is a game, then we got to do this en masse. We got to do this quick. So let's, let's invent technology, right? And then now that we have a little bit of technology, the Bill Gates, the Steve Jobs, the Dells, the Bezoses, guess what they're going to do now? They're going to They're going to say, okay, let's leverage technology, not to make money that the way that you were supposed to in this age, but how can we innovate for the next age? Let's begin to control the information, right? So that's where the internet came from, social media, guys like Steve Jobs. And Steve, now, by the way, Steve Jobs began to transcend a few of these. I'm going to get to that in a minute, but Jeff Bezos, okay? Not only did he create tech, not only what was he one of the first to like put together Amazon.com, but Bezos began to put together tech and information on the internet, right? And it's so crazy. People don't understand this, but like Amazon.com, it, it sincerely is almost like a social media. Now I'm not saying in the, in the sense of like a Facebook or a Twitter where you go on there to be entertained, but it's a social media in the fact that you go onto Amazon to shop and guess what you do? You go down and you look at the reviews. Like you are literally becoming social and you're making purchasing choices off of the social cues that other customers are giving you. Like it's absolutely insane what is beginning to take place as time speeds up, as opportunities get bigger, and guys, another, another just quick reminder, every generation that innovates, okay, and they push through, now way more wealth is created, and not only is way more wealth created, but wealth is created faster, okay? Wealth in every generation happens bigger and faster. I need you to break the old broke mindset that you know your grandparents had, that <clears throat> you had to work 40 or 50 years, and if you worked really hard, and if you saved really hard, maybe one day whenever you're like 60 or 70 years old, maybe you could retire. Well, that's what happened for them. But I'm telling you right now, like it is so possible for people to build wealth, to get rich. And right now in 2024, when I'm recording this video, it is easier than it ever has been ever before in human history because we're not living in our grandparents' generation. There's an opportunity right now for this generation, and I'm about to get there here in a moment, okay? But guys, every generation, the wealth gets bigger and it gets faster. I need at least five people in the comments to just drop these two words, bigger and faster, okay? If you wanna be a part of the new wealth economy, drop those words in the comments, bigger and faster, okay? So come and be here to the board, let's keep going. Hey, real quick, if you've made it this far into the video and you're liking it, do me a favor, share this video with somebody that you think might also receive some value. My biggest heart in this channel is to simply bring some awareness, financial literacy, and do it all from a biblical perspective. So go ahead and share the video, like and subscribe, do all that stuff too. Back to the video. Now guys, the moment of truth is here. This is the age that I believe that we're in right now. So from 2007 until who knows how long this is going to take, okay? Now, by the way, we are living in the first economic generation of all of human history. Remember, every economic age speeds up over time, right? The first one took thousands of years, and the next one took hundreds, and the next one took decades, and then on and on and on to where it's just a couple of years. But from 2007 until who knows how long, this is the first time in all of human history 
that an economic age did not last shorter, it's actually going longer. And now the age that we are in today, okay, this is the age I like to call tech information slash education, okay? We are in the age right now of tech information education, okay? So now we're not just using the, using the internet and social media just to like, I'm just, I, I don't know if you guys are old enough for this, right? But when I was growing up, you would just like surf the web, right? Like I'm just surfing the web, like la di da di da right? Like whatever, like, oh, this is, what's this website? Well, what's a website, right? Like we were, we were discovering all that back in the day, but now it's not just like surf the web, right? Now it's not just like, I posted a picture of my latte on Instagram. It's not that anymore. Now today, it's all about utilizing, leveraging the, the tech and the information age, putting them together, and now we're in the tech information education. Think about that, like the, the, the technology and the distribution age and the, the machine ages, none of these ages ever really stopped. They all just begin to mature into the next age. So yes, we still have machines, Yes, we still have agriculture, right? Yes, we still have distribution. Yes, we still have tech, all these. But today, guys, in 2007, something literally like one of the most craziest inventions of all of human history hit in 2007. If you know what it is, drop it right here in the comments and I'll give you a little hint. Remember I told you that this guy, Steve Jobs, comes back, right? He, he transcends a couple of different of these uh, industrial ages, or sorry, he, he transcends a couple of these economic ages. Guess what was created in 2007? You guess it. It was the iPhone, right? So the iPhone literally took all of the information and it was a, it was a conglomeration of you know, the industrial, the machines and the distribution and the tech and the information that was available and now all of it came together into the palm of our hands. And now it's not, we're not just sitting here. Yes, we can use the internet for leisure, but now many, many, many of us, just like yourself, because you're watching this video, we use uh, our iPhones and we use social media to learn, to be educated, to be entertained, to shop. Like it's all happening right here, right? So guys, I wanna give you a charge today. I want to encourage you today. Like the moment that we are in right now, why did we go from all the way in the agriculture age, all the way down here to this age of tech information slash education? Because I am telling you right now, guys, one thing that I teach my students is how to create digital products. Okay. Like I'm telling you right now, courses, eBooks, online mentorships, even free content like this on YouTube, Guys, this is going to be a game changer if you jump into an opportunity like this. And by the way, it doesn't have to even be with me, right? It doesn't have to be with one of my programs. I'm just saying, you have got to figure this thing out. I had a student recently join uh, one of my programs a little over a year ago, became a millionaire in less than a year. Like in less than a year became a millionaire. How was that possible? Because I showed them how to be wise and their generation. Listen, if you're struggling right now in your finances, if you're struggling in your wealth creation, it's probably because you're trying to make a fortune today in the present by making a living in the past, right? And guys, I'm telling you right now, no matter how old you are, no matter how young you are, maybe you're a young person watching this going, man, that sounds crazy and I like to do something. Does it matter how old? It doesn't matter how young. If you apply yourself and take massive action and massive steps towards the opportunity that is available to you in your generation, guess what's gonna happen? You're gonna become wise in your generation. You're gonna be able to catch these trends of opportunities that are available to us today in 2024. Okay, you can put your knowledge, your experience, your passion, your expertise, you can put it out there onto the internet as a digital product, right? People can and will pay you for the information and you can literally change your financial future forever. But it's not gonna happen if you continue trying to build wealth in your grandparents' generation, in your parents' generation, from three, four, five generations ago, it's not gonna happen. 
you got to jump on to the opportunity that's available to us today, okay? Guys, thank you so much for watching this training. I hope it was inspiring to you. I hope it stirred some ideas in you of what you can do today to take advantage of this incredible opportunity. The time that we live in right now is absolutely mind-blowing. Guys, make sure to subscribe to the channel. Hit the like button. If you made it this far, thank you so much. I hope that you've enjoyed this video. It's completely free for you to subscribe and like. It pushes the algorithm to get this thing out to more eyeballs and it alerts you whenever I drop more content like this every day. Thank you so much, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you in the next video.